Today we've got the pleasure of being on the Summerton's family farm and uh, we're speaking with Daryl today. We're just a tad north of Penaroo in God's own country and believe it or not to get here we had to go through the police roadblock so hopefully on the way back they won't think I've been to Mexico. So Daryl you've been farming for a few years around these parts? Yeah I left school in 1952 and started in 1953. Right so uh with all those years of experience, are there any one particular um, seasons that have stood out as being a bad frost year? No, it's only recently that I can remember being hit badly by frost, and that, uh, and that was uh, within the last oh, four or five years, I suppose. But we've, we've tried to counteract that by sowing later. Right. Uh, we sow, because, because we've got big modern machinery now, we can sow in a couple of weeks or, or, or more. Uh, odd. Uh, it's uh, a lot better to to just leave it until the optimum time to avoid the frost. We, we have a, a, um, uh, a penalty because you don't get the yield of the real early crops, but then again, if you get a frost, you've more than compensated for yeah. it. So. so it's all about managing risk. Yeah. So what about looking at varieties? Have you um, been looking at that in terms of... We, we try, generally try the new varieties when they come out to see how they perform. Uh, we've kept one variety which is a bit unusual around this area and that's emu rock. We plant that on the, on the hills and we plant that one of the last crops to put in because it's a very short growing season. But if, it, if uh, the, the finishing rains are there, it, it yields as well as spe uh, scepter. Um, yeah. And what about on the frost side of things? Is it any more... Uh, yeah, that um, uh, emu rock is more susceptible to frost than what scepter is. Right. So yep. we don't plant it down in the, in the, in the flats. Yep. No, oh, very good. What about your neighbours in the district? You know, from uh, a few years ago, I was the agronomist here, but certainly uh, frost was always a bit of an issue at Pinaroo. So, it's yeah, sort of more more uh, southeast of the town, they had. Um, I think it was 1973. They had a massive frost through there, wiped out many farmers. Um, we haven't heard of anything of that major size uh, since then, but I think varieties has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Plus time of sowing. Yeah. So in terms of um, where the research effort should go in the future, um, what priorities do you think there should be for research into frost? Well, I think the fr uh, if they come up with a frost resistant uh, variety, then they have to balance that as to whether the, uh, uh, the results are as good and sometimes you, you get one that cures one of your problems but you lose the, lose the, the amount of uh, grain that you have at the end of the day. So, yeah. so it's a bit of a balancing act, I think. Yeah. So I suppose it's a bit of a double-edged sword in terms of uh, when you put the crops in and the relative risk from um, yeah. from frost, so you're always juggling the two things. Yeah, yes, yeah. You see, we don't sow as many acres as or hectares as some people, and they have to start off early, otherwise they're too late finishing. Whereas we, we're, uh, I suppose, one of the smaller farmers around here, and we, we can sow it in a small window, and so we don't need to start early to, to get all the seeding done at, at the optimum time. Oh, thanks, Daryl, for um, your words of wisdom and sharing your experience with us, and uh, let, let's hope that uh, we can get some decent finishing rains for you. Yes, that's, that's what we like up here, if we can get them. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>